This video shows how to create a simple ground connection with the pla base plate in the structure seen in the previous video, which discussed importing a FAMA model using the full version of CSE and searching for JNodes. JNode AH, which we will be working with here, is a simple ground connection involving a column. Let's look at the real node, or renode, associated with JNode AH, which is the only one currently selected. The JNode occurs several times in the structure, but we only need to build and check one of its associated renodes. At the outset, only the member is present, without connections. We can build the real node manually by adding the necessary components freely as required, or we can automatically assign a compatible predefined node if available in the archive. Let's take a quick look at how to assign a predefined node, which involves using the assign pure node command. This dialog box offers only the predefined nodes that are applicable to the current node. Without going into details about this functionality, we choose the last connection. A list is shown, with all the operations that will be performed automatically to construct the current node based on the chosen predefined node. The predefined nodes are parameterized, for use with similar nodes of different dimensions. The parameters can be edited as required, when the predefined node is assigned. In this case, we apply it as is. The current node has been constructed based on the chosen predefined node. The user needs to check that the connection has been constructed correctly. Then, if nothing needs to be modified or added, we can move on to setting up and running the automatic checks. We have mentioned adding components manually to be positioned at the user's discretion. We reset the node, bringing it back to its starting state and will build it manually. We insert the base plate. We define the dimensions. We can alter the object's orientation before inserting it in the scene. Then we select the point where we want to insert it, and we click the point in the scene to which it must correspond. As this is a connection with a rigid attachment, we insert the constraint block simulating the foundation. We insert the weld layout connecting the column to the base plate. We reduce the thickness of the two welds on the web, 8 mm. We insert a bolt layout to anchor the base plate. When the face on which the screws are to lie is selected, CSC automatically recognizes the objects to be drilled according to their position. We click on the upper face of the plate. A dialog box appears for the bolt layout parameters to be defined. We choose the bolt diameter and class. We specify how the bolts are to be arranged.
the following types of arrangement are available regular, staggered, circular and free. We will not go into the details of these various bolt layout settings here as they are covered in dedicated lessons of their own. In this case we want the layout to work on a shear and tension basis and to act as an anchor. The anchor properties need to be set up in the dialog box provided. We also want the tension to be taken by the bolts and the compression to be absorbed by the plate crushing against the constraint block. Hence we will use a bearing surface. We define the constitutive law for the material that constitutes the support, in this case concrete blocks. Of the four non-linear, no-tension, constitutive laws, we select the parabola rectangle version and set up its parameters. Finally, we define the bearing surface. Using the controls provided, we can define one or more bearing surfaces in line with the standards. The outlines of the various objects involved can be used to define combinations and intersections of faces with suitable projecting borders depending on the stiffness of both the surface and the plate. Without going into details about this dialog box, we specify the bearing surface by using the outline of the member. To the outline of the member is added a border C. The width of this border is computed automatically depending on the existing components. The bearing surface will also be used to assess the support resistance to compression. This check will be performed on the constraint block. We insert the layout. We check for overlaps. The objects do not overlap. There is also a check that we could use to see that the various entities are joined correctly, although CSC checks this automatically before verifying the connection. Setting up the checks will be discussed in detail elsewhere. We will simply select Eurocode and set the checking combinations as those from the imported FAM model. This dialog box is also used to choose, among the other options, the settings for the output listing, the safety factors, the checks to be run, and the check on the component shifts. Let's check the connection. The checks have been completed. The results listing, if requested, is shown automatically and now all the post-processing commands have become available. We can now see the utilization envelope for each component, for all combinations and all instances of the JNode. A battery of checks has been run. Strength checks on the various bolts and fillet wells, pull-out checks on the anchor bolts, a compression check on the concrete block, bearing stress punching and block tear checks on the objects pierced by bolts, simplified resistance checks for the components. Besides these checks, the system can also automatically create FEM models of the components and solve them. CSC has linear and non-linear solvers 
and other fan programs can be used where an interface is available. Users can also add new checking criteria of their own for the system to run automatically. Besides the utilization envelope, with the maximum utilization, its cause and the conditions in which it occurs, the following results can be displayed. The deformed views for the connection in the various combinations and distances, the forces transmitted between the various entities, the results for the net section and for the bearing surfaces. We can display the envelope of the coefficients of utilization for each combination. As well as colored coded maps, there are also deformed views, block tearing failure paths, results for the bearing surfaces and for the members net sections, the forces transmitted between the various components, stress analyses for the automatic FEM models and more. For more on these aspects, please see the other lessons dedicated to them.